something terrible. Oh, we aren't even connected. <laughs> something terrible just happened. Dude, that was bad. <laughs> that was so bad. So there is something catastrophically wrong with the Humvee at the moment. And I think it's time we figure out what that is. Let's get started. Don't push the gas anymore. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh no. Oh jeez. Dude, how did that happen? So the nut came off. That is completely sheared off. I'll explain the hose in a second, but dude, so we snapped that? Yeah, that's snapped. No way. So the reason we have all of the coolant hose back there is because uh, we don't have the charger hooked up yet. And so the coolant hose is just looped to itself and then eventually we put the charger in line. But let's see if we can find that nut. Dude, what the heck? Oh, it's still hot. Ah, oh, it's way hot. My theory is the splines on the yoke are too big. And so it went together, cinched it with the nut, and that was holding enough friction to drive. And as you drove, it would slip a little bit, but when it was slipping, it was tightening the nut. Until it just cinched it right until off. Until it sheared it off. Woo! So we have taken off the yoke. We have put a strap here to support the drive shaft. Now we're gonna try to limp home in front wheel drive. garage again and we have an idea of what happened but hopefully we can figure it out for sure i think we need a new diff though so i think i got it here we have what was connected to the current drive shaft the current setup that we have going to the differential and this is what was previously on the differential if you notice there's a bunch of little tiny teeth inside of there this particular yoke has 28 teeth while this yoke has 29 teeth. So when it felt good on the output shaft of the differential, it wasn't actually sitting perfectly. So when the motor was spinning, it was tightening that bolt like a wrench and yoinked it right in half. And here is the bolt that got sheared off. It is massive, both a testament to the strength of the electric motor we installed and also the inability to count of the guy who installed it. Either way though, I do know we need a new differential and I should probably put the correct yoke on this time so we can actually go somewhere. It's not very cost effective to be shredding the original hardware to bits every time we go for a drive. With the Hummer back up on the lift again, where it's been for the last year and a half, it's interesting that the piece that bridged the new stuff from the old stuff is the part that broke. And of course, I do have to accept some of the blame for that since it was the wrong yoke in place, but it did feel like the right yoke. At the rate we're going, the Humvee of Theseus does seem to be an apt description of what we have going on. As we're taking this thing out, the differential is the link between all of my new electric equipment and the previous 27-year-old equipment that made up the 1995 military Humvee. I did expect it to be the weak link, however, I also speedlined that failure by installing the wrong yoke. The differential is what takes the rotational force from the motor and sends it out to each of the tires. It's pretty crazy inside. It's called a torsion torque sensing differential. And what makes it different from a regular differential is the special spur gear and worm gear combination that allows for better traction off-road. It's like a naturally locking differential without actually having lockers. 
Dropping the differential down is pretty simple. It took us about an hour or so. We disconnected the half shafts, uncoupled the e-brake lines, pulled the brake calipers off. Brake pads look good. And finally, there are six large bolts holding the whole housing in place. We don't need to disconnect the drive shaft, of course, since the electric motor already did that for us earlier. Sick. Check this out. All this dust up here on top, it's definitely not from me. I only put about 20 miles on this thing before it uh, went kablooey, so all this dust is from wherever it was previously. And as you can see, this is where the failure happened. And while it is sketchy, it's not a matter of life or death just kind of expensive. Some mistakes, however, are a matter of life and death. I'm currently listening to an audiobook from my channel sponsor Audible about the early days of the space race. Back in the 1950s, when the United States and the Soviet Union were trying to orbit men around the Earth and put a man on the moon. Millions of little details have to perfectly align to keep people alive in space which Gene Krantz talks about in his audiobook, Failure is Not an Option. If you've liked watching this Hummer project and want to hear about a much higher stakes life or death engineering project, I'll leave a link for this free audiobook and free 30-day trial of Audible down in the description. Audible.com slash jerryrig or text jerryrig to 500-500. Along with the free title, you also get access to Audible's Plus catalog with podcasts, Audible originals, guided fitness and meditation programs, and you'll get a free audiobook every month as you continue your subscription. I've personally been subscribed to Audible for five years now with no regrets. Audible.com slash jerryrig or text jerryrig to 500-500. No long-term commitments or contracts, just how we like it. Failure is not an option. And huge thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video, which supports the project. Out with the old, in with the new. Another thing that might have been the issue is that when this yoke gets attached to the pinion, it needs to be a certain resistance as it's rotating. It's not a certain torque, which means that if we replace it, we need to match that same turning resistance instead of matching a certain torque spec. All due to the fact that there's some kind of crush ring inside and we can't crush it more than it's already been crushed or else it breaks apart, which could have also been the issue. So if I take our little inch pound torque wrench gizmo and put it up here, we can see that it's actually 40 inch pounds worth the force for the rotation. And we will just match that rotation when we have the new yoke installed. And this is what the manual is telling us to do. So right now we are replacing the yoke with a larger one that can handle larger U-joints and more torque. The one we're installing right now can handle 2,200 foot-pounds, which is more than what my electric motor can output, so we should be pretty safe. This yoke is no joke. And here is the new one with the slots for the larger U-joint. <laughs> that fits much better. 
So now, with the nut tightened down, it looks like we're getting right around 49, which is a smidgen more than we had previously. So we should be good. Fingers crossed. Ah, freak. Now with everything installed, we should be right back to where we started at the beginning of the video. Let's see if it works. All right, we are in four, we are in back in two wheel drive, so we should just have power coming from the rear. No weird noises yet. So we are at a construction site right now. Probably shouldn't be doing this since we've barely put this thing back together again. But there's this little pile of cement over here. Should be interesting. We're in four wheel drive. We should probably go into four low. So we are in four low right now. How are we looking? That's deep. Am I gonna scrape? I'm not gonna clear this. <laughs> Should I turn back? <laughs> yeah, you're not making it over. Oh, man. What if we just park right here? This is a great spot. We just won't count this as the official off-road test. It'll just be test of the emergency brake. Do we sink deep? <laughs> Honestly, I thought this surface was gonna be way harder. Like seems solid. That is a heavy truck. We're gonna try one more hill just for fun. Holy smokes. You've got like four feet to the crest. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go back it down. <laughs> So let it be known that the Hummer could have done it if the terrain was a little less soft. Either way, I think we are successful in figuring out that particular issue. We still have a couple more things we have to do before we really test it off-road, like actually connect the charger and the coolant lines like you saw earlier. Didn't expect you guys to see those, but here we are. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Huge thanks for watching this whole project. I think this is video number 20. It has been a fantastic learning experience. Super glad I did it. Don't forget to check out Failure is Not an Option from Audible down in the description. Come hang out with me on Instagram and Twitter. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.